Aloha, everyone, and welcome to the Community Information Exchange. I'm Rick Black, the Director of Public Affairs for U.S. Army Garrison, Hawaii. We are attempting to broadcast live today. Uh, we are recording, and we will post uh, this recording on Facebook after the uh, uh, event. Uh, if you are joining us in person today, please use the microphones in the room for any questions. And um, if you're looking for a copy of today's slides, they are on our website at home.army.mil slash Hawaii and click on the link for Community Information Exchange on the right and then click the month. Shown is today's agenda where we have focused in on a handful of community information topics from our presenters. There are still tremendous amounts of information available in the additional information section of the slides that are available on our website. At this time, I'd like to turn the program over to the command teams for opening remarks. Well, aloha and good afternoon, everybody. Oh, good morning for at least a few more minutes and then good afternoon here in about 20. On behalf of General Evans and Command Sergeant Major Haney, I'd like to thank you for coming out to today's uh, CIE. And then for all the folks dialed in, thank you for, for dialing in and, uh, and attending today's event. I'd like to open with just four things, and then I'll hand it over to the other command group uh, to provide some other opening comments. First is um, I'd like to thank the community for their patience uh, during and while we continue to uh, monitor our water situation here on Schofield. Uh, we're certainly looking for any feedback uh, as we try to be completely transparent with you on, uh, on what happened, but uh, I think we're in a good spot, or we're in a better spot, and uh, we're not completely out of the woods, but do appreciate everybody's patience as we work through that and, uh, and resolve that situation. The second thing I'd like to highlight, and you'll see um, throughout the slide deck, if you attended the CIEs in the past, we've tried to, to really hit the hot topics by the different uh, garrison sections and then provide in the backup slides that either handed out or downloaded online or, or just seen online, uh, the, sort of the flyers and things like that. What we found is we had slides that, uh, you know, like 200, 200 slide slide deck that really was sort of cumbersome to, to, uh, to go through. So we're hitting high points and, uh, and then you'll have the backups for the command teams out there, the units that want to post flyers that reinforce some of these efforts. With that, um, I would highlight two slides that are in there in their CIA and that we'll cover. The first is the tenant satisfaction survey that uh, is currently ongoing. We send a message out through command teams. It should hopefully have gotten out through the uh, family readiness groups or soldier family readiness groups. Uh, we have a window now where you can go on and, and uh, provide DOD. It's not to IPC or to anybody, but directly to the Department of Defense on the satisfaction of uh, housing and things like that uh, on post. And so I'd, I'd encourage everybody to please uh, participate in that. I think right now we're at about 13%. Our goal is to get about 50%. So we're, we're a, a, a quite a bit of ways from achieving our goal. And uh, we'll have a flyer and in the slides is a, an opportunity to, with I think a QR code or certainly an address to get that. The, the final point I've got and I would highlight is it is the Ar Army Emergency Relief Campaign uh, uh, season to give. And many of our soldiers, if you don't know this, benefit from AER. I, I will share with you that after 28 years in the Army, AER has, has evolved into a very uh, user-friendly and supportive system to our soldiers and their families. Uh, when I first joined, it was very difficult to get an AER loan, and many soldiers said, why should I give? They never give any money. And, uh, and so there was a lot of confusion. And I, I compliment and, uh, and really congratulate the leadership of AER uh, in, in, one, raising money and establishing ways to support soldiers and families, which really is mostly through grants. Grants means grant means you don't have to pay it back. And so uh, I'd encourage everyone to give. There's several ways to give, but it is the AER season. The most, the easiest way is at the PX. When you pay, you can donate through that uh, pay system or through the, the kiosk, but there's other ways as well. And so I'd highlight that slide and that information that's coming up. Again, thank you for attending. I'll pass it over to our garrison command team, and then uh, we'll get started with our briefing. Hey, good morning, team. Just to add for the Army Tenant Satisfaction Survey, so that survey is going to run through the 18th of April, so only for uh, a couple more weeks here. So I'd greatly appreciate uh, logging on. Uh, IPC had sent out the, uh, the email in order to uh, give us a feedback on that survey. And then two is the, uh, as Colonel Garcia had mentioned, Army Emergency Relief. So to date, we've, uh, our team has given about $6,000. The goal was 75. And then last year, 
the team over at ACS handed out just over uh, $2.1 million. So we got some work to do in terms of uh, additional awareness and then for contributions. Good to go, Rick. Let's get started. Okay, great. I do have confirmation that our live feed uh, did start right at the beginning of the CIE. So I would uh, ask those joining us virtually, please post questions as comment on the Facebook and we can get to your answers live. We'll come up, we'll follow up in the coming days. So uh, thank you, sir. So we'll, we'll proceed with today's uh, exchange of information from our panel, starting with Dennis Duck from DFMWR. Hi, good morning, everybody. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here this morning. We have several things we want, want to talk about just a little, very briefly. So April is Child Abuse Prevention Month. And here to tell us how Army Community Services plans to raise awareness of that is Perry Vaugh. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Mr. Duck. Uh, my name is Perry. I am with Army Community Service Family Advocacy Program. As Mr. Duck had mentioned, April is National Child Abuse Prevention Month. It is a time to raise awareness to, uh, of the importance of protecting children from abuse and neglect. This month is um, focused on educating individuals and community members on the signs of abuse, how to prevent it, and how to report it. This year's theme is Rock Solid Families Starts Here. In support of the campaign, we have planned many activities uh, throughout the month of April. Our first event is the Child Safety Fair scheduled for Friday, April 5th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. here at the Tropics. We have presenters discussing different safety topics and over 20 organizations offering information and resources. On Thursday, April 11th, we will have our superhero uh, run walk event this will take place at 6.30 a.m. at Way in Field. We encourage all participants to dress up in their favorite superhero costume and join us in that fun run. In addition to these two events, we also have outreach tables that will be placed at different locations, both on the south and on the north, and we'll also be doing a weekly sign waving at different locations as well, just to get the, uh, the message out into the community. All of these events are free and open to the community. Uh, for more information, you could call us at ACS. That number is 808-787-4227, or follow us on our Facebook page to get the latest information on our activities. If you know or suspect abuse is occurring, please contact our installation reporting point of contact, which is our military police. You can contact Schofield Barracks at 808 655-5555 or Fort Shafter at 808-438-9395 and Child Protective Services at 808-832-5300. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you all at our event. Great, thank you, Perry. So we talked a little about AER. If you want to know how we're uh, progressing towards our $75,000 goal this year, you'll see the uh, red and white thermometers at most uh, main post gates, uh, and you can see how, how our donations are adding up. Fun Fest is here, finally, Saturday, this Saturday, the day after tomorrow, the excellent 5K fun run, the Fun Fest itself, Earth Day, the travel fair, vendors, sponsors. It's going to be a great time. Hope to see everybody out at Wayne Field, 9 o'clock on Saturday. The Hangar Entertainment Center is reopening its lanes, its bowling lanes, uh, with Hyper Bowl. That's happening on Tuesday at 11 o'clock. So they've extended their hours at the Hangar to Tuesday and Wednesday, adding lunch. And to celebrate the opening of the Hyper Bowl, anybody coming in for lunch Tuesday through Friday next week will get one free game so they can experience the lights and the sounds and the sensors and everything that makes up Hyper Bowl. So join us out at the hangar at some time for lunch next week. The User High Installation Voluntary Rec Volunteer Recognition Ceremony is set for 1 May. If your units and yourselves don't have 
uh, your nominations in yet. Tomorrow is the deadline. Not on this slide, Easter Sunday, uh, Holly Akena is hosting a brunch. This normally sells out every year, but as of today, there are still a few spaces left. So if you'd like to reserve a seat, you can call Holly Akena at 787-4011. And then for more information on the, the, the events on this slide and the many, many other things that are going on in DFMWR, please join us on any of our social websites, social uh, uh, media sites, or join us at our, on our website. It's himwr.com. And everything that we're doing is right there, including ways to get a job. So we just had all the kids off of school last week for spring break. Then we had them off for Prince Cujillo Day. Uh, and tomorrow is Good Friday. Uh, your kids will be off again. Uh, 15th, Purple Up Day. So April is also the month of the military child. And we encourage everyone to recognize the important role military children play in our community. So we're asking you to purple up. On April 15th, wear purple. It's that easy. Hope to see all of you at Fun Fest on Saturday. That's all I've got for you this morning. All right. Thank you, Dennis. Appreciate it. We'll uh, continue our exchange with uh, Staff Sergeant Fan from Boss. Hi, good morning. So for the rest of this month, we still have a lot of great opportunities that you can take advantage of. Today, we have a finance class where we're teaching soldiers how to budget your money, increase your credit score, and also if you're looking into buying a vehicle, what type of questions should you ask? Um, so we're going to be doing that today at 1600 right here in Tropics. Uh, it is open uh, for the first 30 soldiers, so please reach out to us if you have any questions. And then also, uh, tomorrow we have game night. So with our game night, uh, it is going to be at the hangar. We have it from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, with the game night, we're going to be providing all types of games, uh, services that you can play. We have spades, dominoes, blackjack, um, phase 10, monopoly. Come on out with us. We also will have the bar open as well as food purchases available. If you want to participate, we do work with the drunk driving prevention program. And with that, we'll be able to provide a shuttle service all night. We're going to be picking up and dropping off soldiers so there's no drinking and driving. So if you'd like to participate with us, that will be tomorrow. And Saturday, we have our next deep sea fishing. Uh, so for the month of April, we have multiple events, including our boss PT. We have sunrise hikes, dodgeball PT, flag football, can jam, kickball. Uh, we also have a snorkeling event coming up on the 13th of April. What's nice with the snorkeling is that we do have a ton of equipment that we can let you borrow. You just have to coordinate with our team if you need assistance with that. Um, so you can either borrow equipment or if you want to use your own, you can meet us out there. But we have a great snorkeling event coming up. We have another deep sea fishing on the 13th and then tons of volunteer opportunities. So again, if you have any soldiers that's looking to get out there, help out the community, you're trying to get your MLVSM, get those volunteer hours, we can help you with that. So we have Access Surf the first Saturday and the third Wednesday of the month. And then we have a beach cleanup on the 27th and then also a car wash happening on the 20th. Um, not only are we doing things outside, but we're also inside. So if there's something else that you're interested in, we have karaoke night that we're going to be helping out again at the hangar two different times on the 4th and the 11th. We have Dungeons and Dragons right here in Tropics. And that's going to be on the 12th. And then on the 19th is game night. So again, any of the events that we offer, we do provide transportation. It doesn't matter where you live on Oahu. We will pick you up and drop you off. You just have to coordinate with us. Um, if anybody has any questions, our office is located right here in Tropics on the second floor, so you can always reach out to us. We have phone, email, we have the group chats. There's many ways you can get a hold of us, but we are always available for you. Pending any questions? Sir Fan, when is the next meeting and who can attend? So, Major, the next meeting is always going to be the first Tuesday. So the first Tuesday of April is going to be on the 2nd. It's right here in Tropics. It's at 1400. Anybody can attend. Um, it is a requirement for all boss representatives, but we do encourage all leaders to come out, whether you are a floor and CEO, a barracks manager, that's also great, because if you have any issues with your quality of life issues, you can bring them up in that forum as well. And then can you also talk about the traveling trophies Roger that we're that. starting? So we have a huge traveling trophy that is going to be presented for the 
uh, boss volunteer of the quarter, and then the boss representative of the quarter. So this trophy is huge. And you're going to be able to take that if you win to your company um, or your battalion. You can bring it back, and it's definitely bragging rights. So we are providing that for the quarter uh, soldier that's getting those nominations, but we are giving um, out all kinds of awards. Every single month, we give out the best boss rep of the month and the best volunteer of the month. And then if there's any other activities that you're doing that are great, we will call you out. We, we love giving you out awards. So. Yeah, so. The other one that we're uh, doing as well is for the uh, battalion command team. So the battalion that is most supporting of the, uh, the boss program between attending the various events, uh, the boss monthly meeting, so on and so forth and then that'll get handed out quarterly at one of the uh, boss monthly meetings. All right, thanks, Sarn Fan. Uh, we will continue with uh, Director of Human Resources, Matt Matunas. Hey, good morning, team. Matt Matunas here. Uh, I've just got a couple topics I want to talk about this morning. Uh, as we head into PCS season, uh, and it's really starting to ramp up right now. I want to remind our leadership teams uh, specifically, take a look at your sponsorship programs. Make sure your unit sponsorship coordinators are uh, assigning sponsors to those incoming soldiers because they're not just going out, they're coming in as well, right? So we want to make sure we welcome, to, welcome them to the USAR HOA team appropriately. Uh, there's three different trainings available. Those are listed on the slide, either through the e-sponsorship website, ACT, and a plug for ACS, they provide sponsorship training twice a month. Uh, our USAR Hawaii sponsorship coordinator, Ms. Haonani Tabakal, she's over in the DHR, and uh, there's her contact information on the bottom of the slide. If you need to have your coordinators reach out and get any information or additional resources from her. Next slide, please. So our education services officer is currently on leave, so I'm filling in for him. Next slide, please. How many, how many of our young soldiers in here have heard of BSEP before? Okay, so basic skills education program. Uh, we've added numerous additional classes, uh, and just two weeks ago I was honored to be uh, part of a ceremony over at the Education Center where we had numerous soldiers that increased their GT scores anywhere from 95 to 120, uh, basically so they can get, war get into warrant officer programs, green to gold, AMED programs, things of that sort, right? So, so take advantage of this. We've added numerous additional classes. Also, please reach out to our education services team if you'd like to have them come out to your unit and provide the classes. Uh, we're more than welcome to do that as well. So uh, a lot of soldiers lately have been increasing their scores of 20 to 25 points, which is just phenomenal. And last but not least, our next college education fair is going to be on the 26th of June over at 604 Ballroom from 10 to 1600. We're going to have over 30 educational institutions over there uh, to support soldiers and their families as well. So all our community members are welcome to attend. Pending any questions? Thank you. All right. Thanks, Matt. We'll continue our information exchange with uh, Director of Emergency Services, Jim Tyler. Uh, Aloha team, Jim Tyler. I'm standing in for the director, uh, Colonel Green. Our topic today is a neighborhood watch program and our efforts to re-energize this program within user hall communities. The program is meant to supplement our efforts to fight, but more importantly, prevent crime from happening in our communities. Strong community involvement in a good, solid neighborhood watch programs have historically shown to reduce crime by up to 15 percent. The program is designed to educate our communities about crimes in their respective areas, establish improved communications with neighbors and law enforcement, and to improve overall security practices and posture. Slide, please. We have 10 neighborhoods and 86 playgrounds under user hall control, some of which are in areas without 24-7 access control, all of which are vulnerable to some form of crime. Between 2021 and 2023, we experienced more than 2,800 crimes. We believe it important to share these numbers with you and also share our standing against other installations throughout the Army and the surrounding Oahu community. Slide, please. The upper portion of this slide is a snapshot comparison. It depicts crime rates of military community, communities against their respective host crime rates, or host community crime rates. Note that our Army populations do fare better than host community rates. For example, to the left side of the slide, 
use of hall rates are roughly one quarter of Oahu's rate and approximately one third of the national average. Of course, one crime is too many and rebooting this program gives us the opportunity to work closer with the community and unify our efforts to eliminate crime. We will be surveying residents of Wheeler Army Airfield and Hilamano Military Reservations next week to gauge the community interest and participation in this program. And we plan updates of our progress at future CIEs and at the resident advisory boards. Listed in the lower portion of this slide includes our continued efforts to reduce crime through Operation Safer Garrison roadside compliance checks, random access measures at select gates, and targeted surveillance operations in areas experiencing increased crime trends. Pending your questions, I'll be followed by Justin Turnbow. He is our Army Wildland Fire Chief to discuss the pending prescribed burn. Justin, before you get started, please, please come on up, but before you get started, I'd, I'd like to reiterate to uh, everyone in the audience and our outstations, <clears throat> you know, you, you see the slide and, you, and, and we can say we are, in terms of crime rates, better than uh, the U.S. average, uh, better than most other military garrisons on the mainland or, or around the world. But, but be, to be very clear, our standard is uh, we hold very high is to try and get that to zero. And so one of the efforts as we have looked at this across the U.S. Army uh, Hawaii leadership is, you know, what else can we do? And, and I give compliments to, to Jim and, uh, and Colonel Green who've uh, looked at implement and, and what he briefed you on is implementing the Neighborhood Watch Program. What, what the statistics really show is we've, you know, taken briefings on this and looked at it is that the best prevention of crime is generally neighbor to neighbor uh, engagement and discussion and when something just doesn't seem right to call it up. And so I'd, I'd ask that, uh, you know, one, you understand we want to get that to zero. It's a lofty goal, uh, but, it's, but, but we're not going to shy away from it. And two, please, if you see something, report it because uh, that, that's where we get our best uh, defense against crime, regardless of where you live on, on Oahu or, or uh, uh, other military installations, okay? So thank you very much. Okay, Justin, now you, you're all clear. Let's talk wildfires. Good morning. My name is Justin Turnbow, as Mr. Tyler said. Uh, I'm the Wildland Fire Program Manager here for the Army. Um, coming up this April, April 15th through the 20th, we'll be conducting our annual pres prescribed fire. This is the seventh consecutive year we've done the prescribed fire. It's approximately 1,700 acres, and it's across the West Range, which is right out that way. Um, last week, you probably saw some smoke coming up from out of there, and if you're up at about 3 o'clock in the morning last Thursday, you probably saw a whole lot. Uh, the good news is those were seven wildfires that we had. Um, it burned about 800 acres of our proposed area. We have uh, several objectives up there. We have a primary, secondary, and a tertiary objective. The areas that burned last week were our primary and secondary objectives that we were going to do for the prescribed fire. So good news is that's going to shorten the duration of this year's event. Um, generally speaking, it takes us three to five days to conduct the burn. Because of what's already burned, it's going to take us probably about two days to wrap this up and be done with it. Uh, one of the reasons why we burn, main reason why we burn, is to uh, protect threatened and endangered species habitat, also reduced uh, unwanted wildfires on the range from training events. Um, when we burn, we reduce the fuel loads out there, so if we have a fire, it's, it's easier for us to fight, it's easier for us to put it out, and it's better for you guys to get back to training. I, some of you probably don't want to hear that, but that's why we're out there. Um, in the event that the weather is bad and we're not able to burn in April, we have a, a alternative date, which is May 13th um, through the 18th. And I know that's during high school graduation and that's kind of a problem, so we're sensitive to that. Um, we try to limit any sort of impacts to our communities and our neighbors by burning with a certain prescription. And what that means is we have certain thresholds that we have to follow, including advising with the United States Fish and Wildlife Service that guarantees that our smoke will get up and out of the area, out over the ocean with minimal impacts to our neighbors and our communities. And any other questions? That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Justin. We'll continue with the uh, Director of Public Works with Tony Ganey. Good afternoon. I'm Tony Ganey, Director of Public Works. Really two things. Uh, one was mentioned by the uh, command team earlier. is the Army Tenant Satisfaction Survey. It is live from 4 March to 18 April. So if you haven't, if you live in Army Family Housing, haven't already uh, taken the survey, about 10 minutes, maybe 15, uh, please do so. Um, we're about four weeks into the survey, and we have about three weeks remaining. Uh, the goal is 30% or higher uh, participation in the survey. We're currently, as of this morning, 16.2%. Uh, 
Uh, so we're about halfway there. Um, the benefit of the survey is it's, it's, it's directly from you as the residents on what's going well and what uh, can be improved. And it informs Army senior leaders in terms of where to apply their resources in, in Army family housing. So it matters. Uh, and, and your voice uh, what determines uh, how we move forward with that. So please do take the survey. Now, if you haven't uh, received a notification to take the survey, there are other ways uh, besides uh, the email sent to you. So you can go online or contact Sol directly. Sol is the uh, uh, company that's doing the survey. It's a third party, Army Housing Survey at, at CELassociates.com. It's on the next slide. Next slide, please. Uh, you can uh, scan the QR code and apply that way. Uh, um, and if you haven't seen it in your email, check your junk mail just in case. Uh, it potentially could be in there. But other than that, uh, also uh, Island Palm also sent out notification through their channel on how to take the survey. Again, uh, important uh, for determining resources uh, for Army family housing, yeah, and your voice matters in that respect. Uh, Sorry, just a quick question for the group. Is, it, is uh, are soldiers in the barracks encouraged to take that survey as well? Does it cover beyond just housing, or is it, is it all quality of life issues on post? It's Army family housing for this particular survey. So. Okay, so, so we're focused on folks living in housing, and not soldiers in the barracks. For okay. this particular survey, correct. Okay, I just want to you know, alleviate some tasks for some of our soldiers in the barracks there. Okay, so the uh, second thing I want to talk about is just really one road closure. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we're repairing a roof, Building 204, on Wheeler Army Airfield, and Sterling Road right adjacent to the building. We will have to close that road for safety uh, considerations and also for use of uh, equipment moving around in order to do roof repair. So that road will be closed uh, within the vicinity of Building 204 on Wheeler Army Airfield uh, for really since yesterday till 31 May. Uh, it's a small segment. It should be minimal disruption to traffic in that area. Uh, essentially, there's no right turn coming off of uh, Wright Avenue or or, or uh, the uh, Santos Dumont coming from the other direction. The pedestrian will have, uh, will be rerouted around the building so that you don't walk into that, uh, essentially a construction area. Uh, and again, it's really for safety concern. So pending any question, that's all I have. All right. Thank you, Tony. Uh, we will now move on with our religious support office and Chaplain Lawhorn. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be here to speak with you. Thank you for taking the time to come out. Uh, again, my name is Joe Lawhorn. It's my privilege to be your garrison chaplain. You can see the slide there uh, with, the, with the phone number. In case you didn't know where we were located, we're here at Schofield Barracks, uh, right next to Main Post Chapel. We're on the second floor, right above Peterson CDC. So if you've got any religious support needs or if there's anything that our team can do to, to support you in that, Feel free to reach out via phone number. Come see us. You can hit us up on Facebook, too. Really encourage that uh, for you. I don't have a slide for this uh, because this isn't the primary focus of my presentation today, but I did want to remind everybody in the room, maybe you're new, maybe you're just getting here and you didn't know this. Uh, here in Oahu, uh, United States Army Hawaii, we have religious services that happen all over this island. Right now, we're up to around 19 different services of all faiths. We meet in seven different locations, uh, so we've got something for everybody if you're interested in a weekend service. The other thing I'll tell you is that we've got a plethora of activities, religious sport activities that happen through the week, Monday through Saturday, in our religious education programming. Anybody who's interested in children's ministry, uh, women's ministry, youth ministry, we've got all kinds of things, opportunities, little communities, uh, opportunities for you to get involved with. Life is just better when, you're, when you do life with other people in the context of a community. So I definitely um, ask for you to consider that. If you've got questions, again, feel free to reach out. The other thing that I want to highlight is that the, at the Religious Support Office, we have what we call the Family Life Counseling Center. We have a chaplain who works there 
who is credentialed as a marriage and family therapist. So this is like a, this is like a step above your unit chaplain when it comes to counseling. And so if you've got an ID card, you are eligible to go get free, 100% confidential counseling uh, with our family life counselor. Okay, so he does individual counseling, couples counseling, marriage counseling, family counseling, kids counseling. If it's counseling, he does it. And so I just want to remind you of that to take advantage of it. I believe everybody needs counseling. Okay, the focus of this presentation is really the hot topic of what we call Holy Week, and you've got the slide up there. So throughout this month, the Religious Support Office has been conducting events in support of the Lent season, which is very important to people. And then, of course, we're in what we call Holy Week this week, as many people are going to celebrate Easter uh, this, coming, this coming weekend. Uh, the slide that you see before you there is just a summary of some of the Catholic community events that have happened. Some, many of them have already happened, but if you look on the right hand of the slide, beginning where it says Holy Thursday, that's tonight. So even tonight, we've got Catholic events that are happening, both AO North and AO South. Start at Holy Thursday and just go right on down uh, to, to the culmination on Easter Sunday, which is this 31 March. All kinds of events, all kinds of opportunities for you to take part of as part of the Catholic community. Again, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out to us about some of the specifics. Next slide, please. So that was the Catholic rundown. Here's the Protestant rundown. If you're a Protestant of any faith, uh, again, some of these have already happened because we've been doing them throughout the months uh, leading up to this season. But if you look on the left-hand side of the slide at the bottom where it says Maundy Thursday, some of you are like, what does that even mean? Some of you know what that means. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a holy celebration uh, that centers around what we call the Last Supper and the, Jesus washing the disciples' feet. There's going to be events centered around that theme, both at Fort DeRussi Chapel down in the south and then at Soldier's Chapel here. This is, again, this is tonight. And then you can see some of the other events that are scheduled beginning tomorrow and then through the weekend. Over on the right-hand side of the slide, you see some information about Easter sunrise services, which hopefully you've heard something about already. Uh, but I'll go into more detail on that in the next and last slide that I have. If you could switch to the last slide, please. Okay, everybody knows what Sunday is, right? It's Easter. Uh, in, the, in Christian circles, it's an important day because we celebrate what, what we believe is the risen Christ, and we're going to be having, we're going to have our normal uh, religious services on that day, right? So at their normally scheduled times, but in addition to that, we're going to be conducting Easter sunrise services in both AO North and AO South. In AO North, we're going to do it at Way and Field. It's going to be at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, and the service in AO South will be at the, there's a pavilion that's right outside the headquarters of USERPAC. It's a covered pavilion. Exact same thing. It'll start at 6.30. So at 6.30 in the morning on Sunday, the flag will go off. Everybody will salute. You'll hear the cannon. And then the worship service will start. It's going to be completely casual, informal. We're not going to have the band there. Um, so, so feel free to come as you are if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, completely casual. It's just going to be centered and focused exclusively on worship. There'll be some refreshments afterwards at both locations. So again, Easter sunrise services, way in field here in the north, 0630. Uh, Fort Shafter right outside of USERPAC headquarters under the pavilion, 0630 in AO South. Uh, I think I've covered everything that I came here to say. Unless anybody's got any questions, I'm going to hand this mic to our commissary friends. All right. Thank you, Chaplain. Thank you. Just as he has uh, mentioned, uh, we'll now hear from Monica from the Defense Commissary Agency. Good morning, team. Um, I wanted to talk about one of the biggest topics right now. We have our, uh, the commissary will be going bagless starting April 30th. This is in support of the agency's efforts to meet state and federal laws, as well as reduce waste in landfills on the island. If you wish to, to voice your concern, we have a, a link on the slide. Um, some of the other events that we have going on right now, tomorrow we'll be collaborating with AFES and honoring our Vietnam veterans uh, with a pinning ceremony from 10 to noon. We also have our store inventory coming up 15 through 16 April. Uh, there will be no changes to operational hours and the only changes that you will see will be products will be pushed to the back of the shelves. We also have our click to go program that we would love for you to try out. We have over 40 pickup slots. Um, this is from 08 to 2000 uh, every day, every 30 minutes. 
and we just have plenty of job openings all the time. That's all I have, pending any questions. I just have one question yes, to make sure we're clear. As we go bagless, does that include the bags that are used for produce in the produce section? No, sir, not at this time. Okay, so, the, so if a customer comes, they can grab one of those clear bags, put bell peppers or carrots or whatever they're buying in those, and still use those. It's the bags in the front of the commissary that are used, and that's paper and plastic will be going away. Yes, sir, correct. Okay, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, have a great day. Oh, and yeah, and Colonel McGonagall, the meat section will still have bags or will not? Yes. Yes, we'll have bags. Yes, okay, yes, so meat and vegetables will still be in bags. To pack your bags out is bagless. Yes. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Thank you to our panel today. Shown is a uh, calendar at a glance with the next three months of significant events. Again, there is also much more information available in the additional information section of the slides available online. At this time, I'll pause for any questions in the room. And I see no one running for the microphones. And I'll also check for any remaining questions from the online audience. I see no indication. So at this time, I'll turn it over to the command teams for any closing comments. All right, and if, if anybody decides they have a question while we're doing closing comments, that is still perfectly, absolutely allowed. So uh, don't be afraid to be the first one to stand up. Uh, last time we recognized the first question asker uh, for their uh, willingness to volunteer. Uh, so I'll just sort of summarize some of the, the theme uh, I think is important in the asses, and it's really, it hits through a couple of them, but it's really community, and the community and the installation doesn't function unless we all work together. And that includes you know, finding the, the positives, helping each other out, but also finding the negatives and giving feedback or you know, where you think you have valid input. So if there is something that you see out there and you think, hey, that, that doesn't make sense to me or why are we doing that, don't feel you're not raising an issue, you're not raising a complaint. If you're coming with an observation of a problem that you observe and a recommendation for how that could be addressed or even if you don't have a great idea, say, hey, I see this as a problem. I'm not sure what to do, but I think we should address it. That isn't an issue, and that is what we should all be committed to every single day is identifying where we can all improve. And that's, that is just a simple life goal and how we should function any organization we're part of. So I appreciate the people out there willing to do that. In terms of the community, we hit uh, you know, a little bit on terms of the religious services that are coming up, but we all get very involved inside the units and the mission, and that is our number one priority. And after we take care of uh, the mission and our family, then really the next is community. But take a look at where you're plugging into the community out there and where are you providing uh, something back into the community, whether it be simply a sponsorship and somebody new is coming in and you're saying, reaching out and positively saying, hey, I'm here, what do you need, how do I help you out? Or whether it's you're looking at a family or a friend and saying, hey, they're, they're having a hard time. And I sat in the CIE and I, I was tracking and Chaplain Lawhorn mentioned you know, if I want to do the military family life chaplain counseling, you know, confidential counseling down there, it's not, you know, you go down there, you don't have to be religious. Or if it's something in ACS, or if it's AER, you know, there's a lot, and we need to be appreciative and understand that the military community does a lot to support itself. Uh, there's always things we can do better to find those, but help each other find the support that exists out there to make every single day a little bit better or to lift those burdens where they exist, where you know you have a teammate who's struggling. Because I guarantee there's somebody out there on the installation who knows the answer or has a resource that you can plug into to get help. And you know, I'll do the final pitch really for ACS and Perry and the team that sits over there. If you don't know, if you walk in the front door ACS that's right over there, uh, PX commissary area, and say, I need help with X, they may not be the building, but they absolutely will work tirelessly to find you what building that is. So. Uh, come together, help each other out, and really that was what I, you know, sort of the pitch for this one is community is find those ways to plug in and identify where other people need assistance. And along that same thing for assistance, so if you're a uh, single service member in here, so the boss forum uh, that's going to take place on the 2nd of April, so a part of that boss meeting is quality of life. So we talk about quality of life that are, you know, potentially some things on the installation that we need to improve. Everything's from something that may be happening into a barracks to potholes, you name it, uh, it's brought up in that forum. So if you have something, that's another feedback mechanism for single soldiers, uh, geo bachelors, uh, is the boss forum. 
and then thanks to the uh, to the team that puts this on between TV2, uh, all the installation partners, uh, Garrison up here, and then thanks to each of you for for being here to get this information, and then share the information. The backup slides are in here. The amount of information of things that are going on in our community, it is substantial. So please, someone else can use this information to, uh, to continue to better this community. So thank you. One last pause for any, any questions in out and then I'll hand it to you to close out. So I don't see anybody coming up. And no questions online, Rick, right? Okay. Uh, I started out by just thanking all of you in the community and the outstations for your patience with uh, the ongoing water mo repairs and monitoring, and I, I just reiterate that thanks to all of you. Um, uh, thank you for, again, for your patience, um, and thank you to our DPW team and really the, the entire group of folks sitting up here and the people behind them and behind the scenes that do so much. Um, I live on, on post, I have for, for about four or five years now. and. You know, I know Tony Ganey, and I know <laughs> when the stuff comes across my email of an issue, I kind of have to take a deep breath and, you know, and realize that it, um, you know, have have a bit of patience, a bit of grace for him. But I, I, DPW, uh, in particular, you know, this week works tirelessly to maintain uh, the systems that we've got, and on top of that, improve them. And so there's a long-term plan. It doesn't come very quickly. Uh, but there's a long-term plan uh, to approve them, uh, to improve the the systems. And when you see some of the pictures, uh, you know that Tony sends, you know, and he updates the the USAR commander and command sergeant major and the command team. You know, there are folks going down, digging down 20 to 30 feet underground, jumping in holes to to repair pipes. And and we acknowledge the systems are old. Uh, they will get updated. And uh, but but there's a tremendous amount of work that goes to repairing them. Um, and so I just, you know, it's not easy, but I extend my thanks to them as well as the entire team up here for all they do. Um, this forum has solved some problems and we, we continue, as Colonel McGonigal uh, stated, you know, to push to bring the problems forward here um, and let us know. An example of that was the, um, the, the, the ticket uh, for our college kids that, that can come back, the dependents that are in, that are in school and they have that uh, authorization and there was a very lengthy process and we've we've shortened that through uh, Matt's team and, and all they've done we're looking to solve you know our, or lower our crime rates and, and uh, Colonel Green and Jim briefed today about how we're looking to stand up neighborhood uh, watch uh, you know communities that report there are lots of things out there I know that we all want to to solve so please as you think through them you know jot them down uh, no, no, uh, nobody will be turned away to ask questions or bring things forward. We're here to, to identify those issues and solve them, including things we find from our uh, single soldiers in the barracks. You know, we're, we're here to solve those as well uh, and make this a better community for all of us and, uh, and our veterans that come on post and, uh, and their families that come to visit. So thank you for all you do. I think we're done. Have a great day.